Yo, what's going on? My name is Kofuzi, and today I'm talking about how to use an indoor exercise bike on Zwift. Nineteen point nine miles for a one hour session today at one hundred and thirty three beats per minute, taking an indoor exercise bike on Zwift with the help of a couple of sensors. Now, for those of you that just want to cut to the chase, I had to watch that one minute long intro already. Uh, I'll put links in the description down below for everything so you can just see what the shopping list kind of is. And hopefully these things will still be available as kind of conditions continue to develop globally. Uh, but for everyone else, uh, I'll go over kind of how I got there, why I'm doing it uh, as a road runner, uh, and some caveats and other limitations that I think this setup might have. Uh, and before I get into any of that, I do want to go over some disclosures. Uh, all of the products that I'm going to be talking about today uh, were purchased with my own money. No one sent it to me. No one's paying me to make this video or to use any of these things in conjunction with each other. Uh, I'm not even sure that these things are recommended to be used together with each other, uh, but I just wanna lay that all out there. No one is gonna get a chance to preview any of my thoughts on kind of this setup or any of these products that I'm using before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. Now, with the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about how to use an indoor exercise bike on Zwift. So the way that you do it is you get an indoor exercise bike uh, and then uh, it's a little bit different because the way Zwift typically works is with uh, a bike trainer or with a bicycle uh, that has like a, either a smart or a dumb trainer attached to it. And then you use sensors on that. With an exercise bike, it's got that flywheel or a different kind of system built onto it. So how do you get the sensors that you'll need to get onto Zwift? And the answer is by using the Wahoo speed and cadence sensors. Now I'm sure there's other speed and cadence sensors out there and there's other ways to do it, but this is a relatively cheap way to get into it. I think for the bike, I have bought the bike from Amazon. It's uh, from the Sunny brand. I'll post a link to it down below. Uh, and on that, I was able to attach the Wahoo speed and cadence sensor. Now the speed sensor is uh, a little bit tricky. That one uh, has to go around the axle of a wheel, usually a back wheel of a bicycle. There's no axle that you can really easily access on an exercise bike uh, because you know there's no spokes, there's no way to like get in there like you normally would uh, for this kind of sensor. But instead what I was able to do is I was able to use some of the double-sided tape that was included with these the speed spent sensor and cadence sensor package and attach it to a part very close to the axle uh, of the sunny exercise bike and the way that this particular bike is designed there is a plenty of space for me to get that sensor in there uh, so that didn't seem to be a problem in terms of getting it to stick on there finding a place for it or uh, even after some riding on it, it still hasn't moved anywhere. So I think it's relatively secure. So uh, that's one that I think will work. I know that other exercise bikes, at least from my research that I've done, have different clearances in terms of how much room there is between like the actual wheel and the forks that are uh, connected to the wheel. And so I'm not sure if this will work on every exercise bike, but it does work on this one. 
And in terms of the cadence, the cadence sensor is something that gets zip tied uh, and that's like two zip ties come in it. I, it doesn't seem like that should be like the official way that you attach something, uh, but it is. And you zip tie it to one of the cranks uh, on the bicycle. Once you get into Zwift, then uh, you'll make sure that uh, it's detecting your uh, speed sensor. And for me, one of the things that uh, my Zwift app kept doing was picking up my stride foot pod that I use for running, uh, even though like my shoes are like down the hall, but it kept picking up that. I had to make it try and uh, very quickly get into not using the stride foot pod for power, but instead using that speed sensor. And then I had to tell it what trainer my speed sensor uh, on my bike is on. And I just scrolled all the way to the bottom to like some unlisted unknown or whatever generic uh, dumb trainer. And I don't think that's the words that it used, but I had to pick the one like all the way kind of at the bottom. And so that I had set up, the cadence sensor got picked up relatively easily. Uh, and then I used a heart rate monitor as well. I used the Wahoo ticker, the Wahoo uh, branded uh, heart rate chest monitor uh, so I could get that data as well. Uh, sometimes I had a, a difficult time having the Zwift app pick up all those things. So what I would sometimes do is I would open up the Wahoo app and make sure the Wahoo app could detect all those three sensors. Um, and then, um, then once it did, then I would switch over to the Zwift app and that would seem to work. Uh, the speed sensor seemed to be the one that the app had the most difficulty picking up. And then sometimes it would switch places and then the cadence sensor wouldn't get picked up. So it was a little bit frustrating at times. I've run into some issues with uh, the Zwift app not picking up detect, uh, and detecting sensors before. I'm not really sure why that is. Now in terms of turning on those sensors, uh, all three of the sensors, the heart rate monitor sensor and the cadence and speed sensors, none of them have on or off buttons. Uh, they all kind of detect activity and then will turn on. Uh, so the heart rate monitor turns itself on once it detects signals from your chest. Uh, the cadence and speed sensors, once they get, I think once they get shaken, uh, then they will uh, turn on. All of my sensors are now like zip tied or glued to something. And so the spinning, once you start pedaling, uh, that is what turns those on. Uh, there's nothing to turn off when you're done. You just stop moving the bike. Uh, and so that's it. So once I got into Zwift, I was able to start pedaling. One of the things that like uh, happened at the beginning in terms of the difficulties in getting all those sensors working correctly, sometimes I thought I had them all selected correctly, but I would get into the app and I would just do nothing. Like my, my avatar wouldn't move at all. And so that was a signal to me that I thought I'd connected all the sensors properly, but they hadn't. And so I just would have to kind of keep trying a whole bunch of times, which is a little bit frustrating. Hopefully after some experience, that is a process that I will kind of understand a little bit better and won't have that frustration with. Once I did get everything working though, I was able to ride through Watopia just fine, or at least I think I was. And uh, I have no idea if any of the numbers that I'm using are, are correct. So the speed uh, number that I'm getting in Zwift becomes from an extrapolation of uh, that speed sensor and how many times it's rotating around an axle of a wheel. Um, and there are a couple of different wheel axle sizes that you can choose from. I just went with whatever the default was one was uh, in the app. Uh, also keeping in mind that my sensor placement is slightly further away from the center of the axle. Like the, normally the sensor would sit right on the axle um, and it would rotate around like this. So there's a certain amount of distance that it goes with each rotation of a wheel that is a certain size and then you can get speed from that. But mine sits just a little bit further out because of the way I had to put it onto this exercise bike. So like one rotation is gonna be a little bit different than one that's, or just to make it a little bit more dramatic, like one rotation here versus one rotation going around like this, it's gonna be a little bit different. Um, I don't know how to calibrate that. I don't own a bicycle. I do ride share uh, when I do ride a bicycle around here for commuting purposes, but I'm a road runner. I don't know like what it feels like to ride 20 miles an hour or 30 miles an hour. I don't know what a 5% incline really feels like uh, because even when I do ride a bike, I don't usually have like a bike computer attached to it. So I really just don't know like what a road feel is, uh, but I am able to get able to get some numbers. The other limitation as well, when you're in the app and it says you're on a 5% incline or a negative 4% decline, um, I have no idea what that correlates to on the bike in terms of gear, because there's no gears on an exercise bike. Instead, there's just a knob that you're like 
tightening or loosening to increase or decrease resistance. And so sometimes I'm inadvertently kind of cheating in the app because I might not realize that I'm on an incline and I might still be at like a relatively low level of resistance. Um, so a lot of times I'll crank it up to make it simulate. I think 5% is probably a pretty steep incline. Uh, so I'll crank it down and make it a lot harder to pedal. Um, but then, you know, it's just an estimation off of no real world experience. So again, the numbers exist and I'm getting numbers. I don't know if they actually translate to real world values, but for my purposes, I don't really care. Um, because the reason that I'm using this is just to maintain a level of fitness, get some aerobic exercise in. The goal today was to get an hour activity at around a, a zone two, a low heart rate level. And I was able to successfully do that. Uh, and so, I don't really particularly care about the numbers. I'm not training for anything on a bike. I'm just trying to, as a road runner, maintain fitness while it might get a little bit more difficult to run outside. I don't have room for a treadmill here in the apartment. So uh, the bike seemed to be something that would fit a little bit more for our apartments, already limited amount of space. And it's a lot quieter to operate than a treadmill might be. Uh, and usually I'm on this thing or gonna be on this thing in the early morning hours where everyone else in the house is still gonna be asleep. Uh, the other reason that I went with the bike and the indoor exercise bike versus a treadmill is that uh, I wanted my wife to be able to use it as well. And so rather than buying like a smart trainer or even a dump trainer and a bicycle to put on it, um, I thought that we would use this. It's a little bit easier to adjust really quickly. So my wife could use it, I can use it to, to, even though we're different sizes and we would need different adjustments. So that way, it's not like she's on a bike that doesn't fit her or I'm on a bike that doesn't fit me. We each can have a pretty decent-ish fit uh, that suits the, the two of us. So that's why I went with that versus trying to get a treadmill. I'm hoping she'll get a lot more use out of this than she would get uh, out of a treadmill uh, that's in our house and to use in the mornings. My goal here is to not completely replace my running, but although if it gets to the point where I can't run outside anymore, then 100% of my activity will be on this thing. And I think I'll be able to do that. Uh, but uh, I'm hoping to get about three to five hours per week uh, on this thing and supplement that with hopefully about six or seven hours of running per, per week and still get about the same amount of training that I might normally get in a given week. Not a high intensity week, but just kind of like an average um, off season maintaining kind of uh, level of intensity and time of activity. So that's ultimately the goal. Now, in terms of the experience as being a road runner who doesn't really exercise on bikes, trying to get on this thing, uh, I had a lot of fun with it. I had a hard time figuring out like what my pace should be for an hour long of activity. Um, and I also just kind of had fun like playing around in the app. Uh, sometimes I would try to get in a group of other cyclists and trying to stick with them and kind of see what they're doing. Every once in a while on the app, there's like these sprint sections uh, and it lets you know that ahead of time. And so you get ready and then it's a relatively short amount of time. It took me about like, usually about I think 30 something seconds of hard pedaling to get through some of these sprint sections. So that was fun to kind of uh, just have like a burst uh, of activity, kind of like a fart lick, I guess, uh, but a little bit different in the cycling world. Uh, so that was kind of just fun. There was uphills, there was downhills, uh, lots of things to like look around at in the app as well, just to kind of keep you interested. So I think uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, I, I listened to only like the app and the app sounds uh, for this particular workout and that kind of a little bit tedious uh, as I was towards the end of the, uh, the workout. But I think that you can also uh, do and listen to the normal things that you would normally listen to. I might just kind of turn the TV, I had it on the TV with my Apple TV, but I might just leave it on my phone and then turn the TV on the news or, or watch something that's not so uh, heavy, maybe something a little bit lighter uh, while I'm doing that. So uh, lots of different ways to kind of distract yourself and keep yourself entertained uh, and occupied while you're still getting in those workouts as well. The other thing that I really like about exercise bikes versus running is that it's really easy to have your hydration and nutrition with you. And so I didn't bring any gels with me for this uh, particular ride, but I did have a water bottle uh, with some uh, sports drink in there. So. And that was nice. You can just reach down and drink it. And it's not like when you're running and you're like, everything's like this and you're trying to like get stuff you know, into your system. You're just on the bike and it's just like really simple. So that was kind of nice. So I felt that was uh, really refreshing. And I was like, this is so much easier uh, to try and drink water this way. So that was a little bit of fun. 
So though, that's my experience so far uh, in terms of a roadrunner uh, has no idea what he's doing on a bike, uh, trying to figure out a way to stay active using an indoor exercise bike and some sensors to get onto Zwift. So if you have any questions about the setup, uh, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I'd love to talk to you guys about it more down there. And before I go for today, I want to talk about the charity run of the week. That's normally something that we do around here where we focus on a different runner who's raising money for charity by running a race. With all the races kind of canceled or postponed for now, I'm kind of suspending that. And instead, this week, my wife and I are going to be donating to our local food pantry. And I know a lot of you guys have been doing the same. So thank you so much for doing that and taking care of yourselves and your neighbors and your friends and families in the places where you live. Uh, it's proof of what we can do together when we run together or, I guess, ride together as a pack. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?